you have a show coming out called the Bow Wow Challenge? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> was this planned or did this start from the whole private jet picture? Yeah, the show was pl- planned. Um, it, the picture and everything kind of birthed the idea of me even thinking about having some meetings uh, about it. I know Mona Scott had called me and said that uh, she wanted to put something together. And then I got on the phone with Anthony Zuckier, the creator of CSI, and got him on the phone with her. And we all put our heads together and we said, yo, I think this would be a dope opportunity for us to actually own this. And once I thought about it, I said, you know, you're absolutely right because there's so many people who, uh, you know, do it for the gram. You know, there's filters. There's a reason why women look different from, you know, the actual pictures when you see them in real life because, you know, of the enhancement. You know, these people really live a different life uh, online than they do, except for me, I can joke and fuck up and throw a picture out there, but I could really afford to go get a plane. I could really do that type of shit. But you have some people that cannot have the choice to entertain and get it, you know? So therefore it's like, okay, I, I want to do this. So I say, yo, I got homeboys that do that shit. Like when Jordans gets into the house, it's like, yo, bow, bow, bow. Did you post them? Nah. <laughs> All right. I'm about to go up real quick. Okay. Go ahead, bro. You know, I let them get it off, and then I'm like, all right, I'll angle my shit a little different so motherfuckers don't, you feel me? It's like, all right, good looking, bro, good looking, bro. So it's like, I said, damn, like, people really do this shit. And then I started seeing a whole bunch of stuff coming out about um, there's companies that allow you to, you can pay them, and you can sit on a plane, they can take a picture of you, and angle the champagne like this, make it look like you're in the air when you're not, just for $500 or a $1,000 rental fee. I'm like, okay. Like, all of this shit has just spawned because of the spectacle that was created and that, you know, black Twitter and social media just, you know, took it to a whole new level. And I think for people, you know, I think a lot of people are sensitive. I'm not a sensitive guy, man. Like, I I, I understand shit, you know. So for me, we was all laughing at it, too. And while everybody was laughing at it, I was thinking about how I could calculate off of it. Like, once the joke stopped being funny to me, I was like, all right, how can I? I got the whole world talking about me. A lot of artists like to say, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta capture the moment. And I'm like, okay, how can I really spin this shit around? Like, you know, I gotta let the joke be what it is, let people have their fun with it. But once this shit simmered down, how could I take this shit and turn this shit into a W? And the only way I could do was let it die down, get a show, or come back with a hit record. If everybody talking about you, and whether it's good or bad, and you're the talk, you're the discussion of. Uh, of, of, a, of a monumental time, like a, a point in time, then you got to answer to the cause. You got you to do something. You know, I think like Travis had hit, Travis Scott hit my homeboy. We got mutual homeboys. He hit him like, yo, that nigga Bow need to drop a single today. Like right when that shit was like trending like number one. So you'll tell Bow to drop a single today. So it's a combination of all the wild shit that I've done. If you watch Jermaine's Breakfast Club interview, he said it like, yo, Bow does shit for, for shock value. And then you'll look up and then he'll either come with a, either a new show, it could be a hit record, and then you're, you don't even know the whole time that he's been working it. He's been working you the whole time. He's just been working you. Getting people to feel certain, a certain type of way about him, but then he can also make the people root for him. Like this year, all I'm seeing now is because of the single that we just put out and how I'm moving. Now my whole shit done shifted to, we rooting for you, Bow. Don't fuck up, bro. This record is crazy, Bow. We rooting, we was, we was fucking with you, we was joking, my nigga, but I'm behind you. I need you to pull through this time, Bow. So it was like, damn, that shit is crazy. Because six months ago, it was all jokes and laughter. Now, because a nigga got focused, stopped the bullshit, I got everybody talking, but now how can I utilize the work and get their minds back on the work and still utilize these motherfuckers yapping about me. The easiest way is to give them a hot product. If it ain't a hot movie, it's gotta be a hot record or it's gotta be a big move. That's the only way you sound it. Kobe Bryant taught me that shit. After his whole big, after his whole case, everybody was booing him and saying this that in the third and how he shut that shit up was he came back and won a ring. Winning, kill, winning is the killer to everything, like everything. Winning. Winning is everything. You put out something that's winning, it'll shatter all the bad shit. It'll all go away. But then you got to stay consistent. But for me, 